Welcome to the first tutorial in OpenCV. OpenCV stands for Open Computer Vision Library, and it's Optimized Computer Vision Library Tools and Hardware, and it supports machine learning. So to be able to run OpenCV, you need Python. To install Python, you just Google Python in your search bar, and um, you'll go to python.org and you'll download the latest version of Python under downloads. And to install OpenCV, you need the command pip install OpenCV dash Python. You'll run that under command. So to run your command prompt, in your search bar in Windows, you type in CMD, and that opens the command prompt. And then you just uh, enter pip install OpenCV-Python, and you hit enter. Now, one thing you have to know, when you install Python, you um, have to enable environmental. So I'll show you what that means. So if you hit, you know, download, I already have it installed, but when you download, uh, if you can see my screen, sometimes, well, the default, unfortunately, is not, um, doesn't enable environmental variables. So what you can do is you can do modify under your Python setup, and you can click on pip, and then you go next, and then you have to make sure add Python under advanced options, add Python to environmental variables is checked. Otherwise, when you run your command prompt and you use the pip install, the command prompt is not going to know what pip means. So um, that's a lesson learned. Um, so you, you don't um, have to make that same mistake. So now we're going to go back to OpenCV. And I'm going to assume that you successfully installed it using the pip command. Google OpenCV in your uh, search bar and uh, click on tutorials under OpenCV. The first tutorial is install OpenCV on your computer, but we use the pip install, which is the easy way to do it. So the next tutorial is the core functionality, core module, basic building blocks of the library. So we're going to click on that. And uh, the very first option is MAT, which stands for matrix, the basic image container. So we're going to click on that. I'll read. We have multiple ways to acquire di digital images from the real world, digital cameras, scanners, uh, and so forth. In every case, what we humans see are images. However, when transforming this to digital devices, what we record are numerical values for each point on the image. As you can see, there's an image of a vehicle, and there's two lines intersecting on the mirror. And that mirror is a matrix. That's what the computer is seeing. I'll read it for you. For example, in the above image, you can see that the mirror of the car is nothing more than a matrix containing all the intensity values of the pixel points. How we get and store the pixel values may vary according to our needs, but in the end, all images inside a computer world may be reduced to numerical matrices and other information describing the matrix itself. OpenCV is a computer vision library whose main focus is to process and manipulate this information. Therefore, the first thing you need to be familiar with is how OpenCV stores and handles images. So uh, they give a history on OpenCV. Uh, you can read if you're interested. And they're talking about, then they talk about the matrix object. Storing methods in OpenCV. The most common method is 
of storing images is RGB, red, green, blue. However, OpenCV, they um, swap the blue and red channels. So it go, goes blue, green, red. And then another way of storing images is hue, saturation, and value, which is a more natural way to describe colors. And of course, you know, there's also uh, grayscale. Uh, I'll read this for you. Each of the building components has its own valid domains. This leads to the data type used. How we store a component defines the control we have over its domain. The smallest data type is char, which means one byte or eight bits. This may be unsigned, so it can store values from zero to 255 or signed values from negative 127 to positive 127. Um, although this width, in this case, of three components like RGB already gives 16 million possible colors to represent. We may acquire an even finer control by using the flow four bit equal to 32 byte or double eight bit equal to 64 byte data for each component. Nevertheless, remember that increasing the size of component also increases the size of the whole picture in memory. So the important tutorial in here is load, modify, and save an image. So here you learn how to write a matrix to an image file using the cvimwrite function. And so we're going to go through this tutorial. And I think I skipped uh, one key point. That one key point is the definition of a matrix. So a matrix is basically a class with two data parts. The matrix header containing information such as the size of the matrix, the method used for storing at which the address is the matrix stored and so on, and a pointer to the matrix containing the pixel values, taking any dimensionality depending on the method chosen for storing. The matrix header size is constant. However, the size of the matrix itself may vary from image to image and usually is larger by orders of magnitude. Uh, OpenCV is an image processing li library. It contains large collection of image processing functions. To solve a computational challenge, most of the time you will end up using multiple functions of the library. Because of this, passing images to, function is common, to functions is common practice. We should not forget that you're talking about image processing algorithms, which tend to be quite computationally heavy. The last thing we want to do is further decrease the speed of your program by making unnecessary copies of potentially large images. So that's why they're using pointers. And pointers is something if you want to know more about, you can Google. Now, I'm going to go back to about the middle of the page to the load, modify, and save an image tutorial using this. So here we go. Now they say the load, modify, and save an image tutorial has been moved. So we click on getting started with images. And if you scroll down, you can see there the source code is either in C++ or in Python. So we're going to click on Python. And right here, you can, you can click here. And it goes over to GitHub. And you can copy and paste the code. We're going to go back to the tutorial. So, and of course, we need to be in Python. But you can also copy and paste from, from here. So here's the explanation. So they say, as a first step, the OpenCV Python library is imported. The proper way to do this is to Additionally, assign it the name CV, which is used in the following to reference the library. So we basically we import CV2, which is the OpenCV Python library, and then we give it the alias of CV, as CV is the alias. The next thing they say is, now let's analyze the main code. As the first step, we read the image starrynight.jpg. Which, from the OpenCV samples. 
So here's our image, starry night.jpg, and it's one of the OpenCV samples. In order to do so, call to the CV I am ready function loads the image using the fall path specified as the first argument. So the CV I am read function loads in our image. And the second argument is optional and specifies the format in which we want the image. This may be I am read color, loads the image into blue, green, red, 8 bit format, and that's the default. So if you know, since the second argument is optional, if you don't include it, then you'll get the default. Another option is I am read unchanged, loads the image as it is, including the alpha channel at present. I am read grayscale, loads the image as intensity one. After reading in the image data will be stored in a CV matrix or CV map object. So this is our third line of code. No, OpenCV offers support for image format using bitmap and uh, some other format. Afterwards, a check is executed if the image was loaded correctly. So basically, they're checking, you know, could they read in the image? And if so, that's a key line right there. Otherwise, there's going to be a system exit. Then the image is shown using call to the CV IM show function. The first argument is the title of the window, and the second argument is the CV map object that will be shown. Because we want our window to be displayed until the user presses a key, otherwise the program would in far too quickly, we use the CV wait key function, whose only parameter is how long should it wait for user input measured in milliseconds zero means to wait forever the return values the key that was pressed so those are the next two lines of code as explained and um, in the end the image is written to a file if the press key was the s key for this the cv i am right function is called that has a file path in the cv map object as an argument. So here's the next two lines of code. So that's all our lines of code explained. In the next tutorial, we'll run this and we'll continue with more examples. Thank you for watching. See you next time. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. Thank you.